Den här programserien spelades in när världen var lite av en annan. En värld där vi flög till USA, kramade främlingar och delade en burkläsk utan att någon höjde på ögonbrynet. Det här är en produktion från UR. Ja, jag tittar på Instagram. Panik! Alltså jag kan lägga ut grejer. Oh. Jag är rädd för typ allt. Döden, livet och vad folk ska tycka om mig. Sitter jag bara och uppdaterar. Under åtta avsnitt befinner jag mig i Los Angeles för att möta människor som är lite mindre vilsna än vad jag är. Kanske för att de till skillnad från mig har en stark tro på någonting. Du lyssnar på Preach, ett program om sökande med mig Linda Ulfjön. I det här avsnittet ska jag testa att koppla bort mig från sociala medier med hjälp av judiska Becky. Ja, jag blir rädd för att ska inte gilla. Eller tycker att jag är ful. Eller dryg. Jag måste sluta. Alltså det här är liksom, det är fruktansvärt. Jag lägger ut vad jag vill. Så får väl de som bryr sig, bryr sig. Men, åh, oj, nu har jag gått Några sekunder. Helvete. Hallå? Vad gör folk? Jag vill att det ska komma likes och kommentarer. Det är det här jag menar med att jag känner att jag måste leverera på Instagram. Att jag känner att jag måste antingen vara rolig eller så snygg att man tuppar av. Den här bilden är ju bara normal. Jag har en extremt komplicerad relation till mina sociala medier kan jag säga. Framförallt Instagram är en källa till så mycket ångest och oro hos mig. Därför ska jag träffa Becky som är ju dina och själv inte använder teknik alls en dag i veckan. Jag ska på shabbat med henne ikväll vilket innebär att man inte har någon elektronik på sig. Så jag kommer snart få säga adjös till min telefon här. Det känns lite vemodigt. Alltså, jag har haft sån ångest över sociala medier på senaste tiden så att det här är nog bra för mig. Kanske att koppla bort en stund. Men det är ju någonting som tar emot. Man känner ju bara nej, du kan inte ta min mobil. Det är liksom så här, det är det heligaste man har. Jättesjukt. Becky bor mellan The Grove, som är en känd utomhusgalleria- och Rodeo Drive, som är en av LAs finare gator- kantad av lyxvarumärken, dyra bilar- och ja, nyrika, shoppande amerikaner. Jag vet inte vad dörren är. Becky har en blommig klänning i varma toner- och en lika varm personlighet. Hon känns liksom som en stora syster- eller typ som en nära vän redan från början. Och energi- Ja, oh, fan vad hon har energi. So nice to meet you. you Come on into my humble Thank mode. you, wow. <laughs> I know, there's, so a, there's a little bit of space. Yeah, it's come in. really nice and comfy. Thanks, I would have come to you, but I, I feel like it's probably, yeah, you can take shoes off. Take yeah. yourself home. Vi går igenom Beckes ljusa etta, fylld med souvenirer och prydans föremål från resorna till Israel. Vi sätter oss i en beige soffa med paisley-mönstrade kuddar och Becky ber mig berätta allt om mig själv. Very Who beginning. are you? What's going on? What is <laughs> What, your zodiac what's happening? sign? You're in LA. So I've been on this journey for like yeah. one and a half week now, I think. Yeah. That's it. That's like, yeah. that's not a long time. No, I'm like, journey. yeah, I know, I know. I'm very tired. What about it is, do you feel like is the scariest? You know, I haven't really dug into this part of myself, like ever. Jag berättar för Becky om min tafathet inför livet och hur målet med den här resan är att hitta svar eller något slags lugn. It's really cool of you at your age. I feel like young people don't really go on this journey to be like, what is religion? It's kind of this like yeah. older thing you kind of figure out maybe later when you're settled and you have kids exactly. or something. It's really yeah. like, why? Like, yeah. how, what happened to you? Yeah, why now? Yeah, I don't even know. I've been like, I've had like anxiety since I was a kid. Like, okay. so I, I just feel I resonate like, with that. Uh, yeah. You know, I feel like I think too much. Like, I think more than the average person. You know. That is a very relatable thing. I think yeah. a lot of people Do. think a lot and they think they're the only person that thinks that yeah, much. Yeah, it's like my brain is always active. Like yeah. even when I'm sleeping, I don't even rest, you know. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's always. I ha- It's amazing that you say that. I had this thought the other day that like, wow, I'm with myself yeah. all the time. Yeah. So I should be okay and be more comfortable exactly. being with myself, I, right? I'm, yeah, but I'm, that's, that's a, yeah, because I, I hate being by myself and that's, 
that could be a reason why you're on this journey to begin with is yeah. like how do I make sense of the voices so that I can be my own best friend in a way that makes sense to me exactly yeah yeah because I, I don't feel comfortable with being by myself now it's and it's because all of these thoughts you know it's because I as soon as I'm like home alone yep. yeah these thoughts are like coming yeah yeah and I, I always like fall asleep to movies yeah I always listen to podcasts or movies because I don't want to be alone with my thoughts Jag är egentligen här på att ställa frågor till Becky men hennes genuint nyfikna och öppna personlighet gör att vi till en början bara pratar om mig istället So Sweden how, how like I don't know much about Sweden does that inform a bit about like who you are you think the culture there I, is a special I, I think so I feel like people in Sweden are quite stiff <laughs> Really? It, yeah Yeah they are until you get to know them you know people are more open here i feel like and especially about like cultural stuff you know in sweden it's like uh be different but not too different right you know right right, right. Yeah, always, be you but like yeah but be a, normal yeah keep it on a good level you know <laughs> i like it here much more but that has nothing to do with this journey I, feel I like think it does. I think maybe. like when you find people that are open and you feel like you can talk and be yourself, maybe that shows you that like where you were, you weren't really open or able to yeah, be yourself. I feel like when I'm here, I I can be whoever I want to be. So who do you think? Like who do you feel like you can't be in Sweden? Like I want to explore like myself, and you know, I a lot of people know me, and I, then I feel like I can't like explore myself and be exactly who I want to be. You know, and you're not. I, I believe that what you're doing right now is super important for everyone to do, no matter how old. Like, you're lucky you're doing it younger. Yeah. But there, it's never too late to do this sort of journey of self. The anxiety, I don't think, goes away. Like, no. I've had anxiety since I can remember. And I yeah, think being I, a thinker is certainly a part of yeah. having anxiety, and it's totally normal. But, like, yeah. I've learned over the years to befriend my anxiety and just yeah. to be like, okay, so when it's anxiety comes here. up, yeah, it's going to be here, but let's figure out how to ground it. Ja, ah, okej, okay, nu får du väl vara nog med mig. Becky då. I want to ask you. Yeah. Who are you? Oh my. Oh my gosh. Give me the life story. So focus story. on you. Well, so I was born in Israel. It's also not born in this country. Wow. Um, and also informed a lot of my upbringing. Uh, I was born in Israel during a time when there was a war. Kriget Becky pratar om är mellan Israel och Palestina. En konflikt som pågått i snart 80 år. När Becky var sex år så flyttade hennes familj från Israel till en av USAs större städer, Philadelphia. Flytten till USA blev lite av en identitetskris för Becky. Eftersom hon var så ung när familjen flyttade så blev hon snabbt amerikan. Samtidigt som hon fortfarande var judinna med mycket identitet i sina israeliska rötter. And I spent a lot of my brain just kind of playing different roles. I was oh, wow. I was really into theater and acting and singing and musical theater. Wow. Hey. Yeah. Yes. Um, but that, all of that to say that I feel like my bringing playing different roles and parts mm -hmm. was because I was hiding the fact that I had no idea who I was. Yeah, it's always it, like that. I've played several roles in my life. Yeah. Like I've had too many characters. <laughs> I think that's an. It's again. It's exactly what I had to realize. Like as soon as yeah. I saw, wow, there's this Becky and this Becky, and then there's this Becky. Yeah. It's like, so who am I? Yeah. That's such a really, really profound question though. Like, is this really me? Yeah. And in my 20s, I moved here after college to LA mm -hmm. and um, took my stab at Hollywood and got lucky and got, you know, an assistant job and I was doing events in Hollywood oh, and I was wow. producing film and I was acting and still cool. hiding. But like, it was really, it was cool. Like, it was cool for like anyone yeah. outside of LA that's like, oh my God, you get to do that stuff. But I was still hiding. I was still getting away with not yeah. really being true to who I am. Oh, wow. And then it all caught up with me, which I feel like is probably where it's starting to get for you. And I was like, yeah. I can't keep living life this way because I'm just no, going to make no. decisions from like a weird place of not knowing <laughs> who I am. And that doesn't yeah. seem like it's going to lead to anything good. Yeah. And exactly. I went on a journey. I went back to Israel. Really? I went back to Israel and took, I just How I long? left my job. I went for five months. Thought it was stupid. I was leaving no. a job and um, and a car and a life and this yeah. thing, this Hollywood dream I'd built. But like, I f I realized that if I didn't figure it out now, I'd never figure it out. So, so I went. What happened there? In Israel, I studied yeah. and I asked a bunch of questions to everyone, all the rabbis and my family yeah. and sociologists and experts, and I came back with a lot of answers and a lot more you questions. Did. A lot more. <laughs> yeah. And more questions. Yes, but the like the plus side of coming back with more questions is that 
I realize that questions are really great yeah. as opposed to being like, ugh, but I want an answer. Now yeah. I'm like, I just walk with the question. But I feel like I need to know. You do every, need some answers. Like answer to everything in my life. You know, I need to know because I'm such a control freak. So I need mm-hmm. to know like everything, you know, that's why I'm so scared of death and like scared of not knowing how my future is going to look like. But uh, when you came back here, yeah. did you feel like, yeah, <laughs> what was your conclusion? There was a real context for me now of, oh, this is why my soul, my body, me, yeah. chose to be a Jew in this lifetime, went to Israel, then decided to come here. Okay, I yeah. have some clarity around the container, the rules, the boundaries. Fakta ruta. The Jewish community that Becky Till has is very strong in LA. This is a clip of bringing up a Hanukkah prayer. Okay. I judiska kretsar pratar man ofta om att vara etnisk, kulturell eller religiös judisk. Gal described her Jewish identity as family, the holidays, the traditions and home. Många judar är de två förstnämnda. Slut på fakta ruta. I, I had to really figure out where I came from to figure out yeah. where I wanted to go. So I did yeah. a lot of those questions and that was the head. Yeah. I was like, okay, Judaism means this and Judaism uh-huh. says this. And I was like, oh, that read, that's cool. <laughs> that makes sense why we have to take off on yeah, Saturday yeah. and just disconnect for a day yeah. so we don't lose our minds because mm-hmm. we're constantly on our devices. Like, yeah. okay, there's an intelligence to that. That makes sense. That was here. But then like the other part of me of just disconnecting and going to Israel and trying to feel if yeah. I really like it. Like, do yeah, I like this? Yeah, because what was your relationship to your faith before? Did you like practice? No, I didn't practice at all growing up. In fact, no. like, you know, Friday nights lighting candles, I couldn't wait to finish so that I can go hang out with my friends. You didn't know what it meant, really? I, I didn't know the deeper why. Oh, yeah, yeah. And my parents didn't really, like they knew it, but they didn't really bo- want to bother us with that. So they didn't go deeper into that. Like, this is why we light candles. This is why we sit together. This is why yeah, you don't sure. go out with your friends, but we spend time together learning and talking oh, and yeah. singing and drinking and eating. And yeah. you know, there's, there's a reason to that. But again, being in the modern world and in America and yeah. wanting to do what everyone else is doing, I wasn't ready for that. And that's okay. Yeah. I just became ready for it later. Beckys resa till att bli en religiös praktiserande judinna hände inte över en natt. Det var tydligen en långsam process som startade i Israel. So I think it has like the decision came over time yeah. of like my head, my heart and the, the all of me like yeah. 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 And it wasn't overnight. No, it, no. And I'm a big fan yeah. of like tea just letting it be a process. Yeah, but yeah, because I don't have any patience at all. You know, I expect everything to happen like this, yep. you know, but I can't expect that to happen. Like in this journey, especially, it's not it's not gonna happen. I mean, it's, I think that's a good thing to have that passion. Like yeah. I definitely, like Rome would have been built in a day if I was building Rome. Yeah. Like I, I have, I know how to do things. I know people, we'd call them, we'd do it. Yeah. Like, yeah, but also, you know, like it's the foundation doesn't get set. Shabbat är den judiska vilodagen. I Sverige ligger vår vilodag fortfarande på söndagarna- som ett arv från vår kristna tradition. Shabbat kan firas på massa olika sätt. Många äter middag med sin familj och tänder speciella ljus. Men Becky har ett mer traditionellt firande. It's this 25-hour window in time that we like step into every single week- where it's this carved out sort of connection time with yourself, with your loved ones, and with the creator, with God, with whatever you want to call it, source. You just don't do anything. You're like a king and a queen. You just, you read, you meditate, you pray, you walk, you enjoy outdoors, you go to friends' houses. You don't do anything. But you don't actually exert effort. Like for a person like you who's like, I need to be doing, Shabbat is probably the best gift (laughs) and the biggest challenge. Yeah, I almost get like stressed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like to spend a whole day without doing like something. Like at first it made zero sense. I was like, this is weird. And I'm a busy person. So I was like, I'm gonna need to do stuff. Exactly. Slowly. So I remember when I started to keep Shabbat-ish, it was about six years ago and I told my boss, so I'm gonna take Shabbat off. Just don't call me. I wasn't, I didn't turn my phone off. I was still online. I was still on social media, but I wasn't working. Then I started to go to Uh, synagogue. Then I started to go to meals. And then slowly I started to really keep it more and more where now I turn my phone off. And completely completely emails off. I don't write. I don't drive. You don't drive? Mm Mm-mm. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. So if I need to go somewhere, I either walk or I plan to be in that area. Oh, wow. And I just keep it mellow. Like tw- and, and the craziest part, I swear, and this is crazy even for me, nothing, I miss nothing. Really? No one misses me. Yeah, because boundaries, <laughs> like when you create boundaries, your world adapts to those boundaries. Oh. Shabbat is our taste of what is like the world to come, like what could be a reality where we aren't so consumed yeah. with doing and we just get to be connected. Yeah. So you get this taste and it like resets you. I think of it like plugging myself into the wall, oh, like yeah. you're charging your phone, you charge yourself and oh, you wow. turn off the thinking side and you get to just be. And for my anxiety, it's been better than any pill I think could really? be prescribed. I think it was just really nice to know that I had a space where I could be yeah. and no one needed anything from me and still, and my success has only gotten better yeah. as opposed to me like missing out on money or missing out on opportunity. Uh, yeah. I've gained more than I've missed out on. I must say Shabbat låter faktiskt väldigt lockande men också skrämmande. Det första jag kommer att tänka på är såklart min mobil och mina sociala medier. Eftersom det är så ångestladdat för mig så kanske det vore bra att vara utan telefon ett dygn. Eller så skulle det bara förstärka känslan av att vara bortglömd. I have like this weird relationship with Instagram. It's very uh... Yeah, it, I just feel a lot of pressure when I'm gonna post something. What's interesting with anxiety is that like, we, we never complete the story. So what you're actually doing, you're like, what happens if I post something and it's stupid? So what happens? Let's complete that story. Okay, what so happens? you post something, yeah. it's terrible. Yeah. One person likes it, it's your mom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the exactly. only person. Everyone's like, oh my God. What 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 happens? Do you die? <laughs> no, but you, I... What happens? I know, I know. I, I've tried to think about that, but I never... That's very interesting what you're saying because I've never really, it's happened too many times that I delete the post like mm-hmm. before, if it's been like 10 minutes and like I don't get the response that I'm used to, like mm-hmm. I feel like maybe it's like a bad time for posting or something. But the way I think about it is like, okay, they think I'm boring, they think I'm ugly, they don't like me, I'm gonna delete this now. Do you think that's true? No. Or... Yeah, I get very, very like vulnerable. Sometimes it feels ridiculous to just, yeah, to just say it out loud because I'm like, oh my God, am I this shallow that I even think about this stuff? You know, that I even care this much about what people think about me, but I really do. It's just, I can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I don't want to be in that place because I hate it. You know, I get anxious if I don't post on social media, but I also get anxious if I do. But like what an amazing opportunity now to take the Shabbat to like taste test what it might be like if you yeah. don't look shut, out. Shut everything off. Right. For, I, Except for yourself and really yeah. being with yourself and learning and being in connection to people. But like just kind of relaxing and, and yeah. not feeling like as soon as Shabbat is in, we light the candles, we say a blessing. And the blessing, like yes, there's words and there's technicalities, but the blessing is really just to say like, I am now choosing to be in Shabbat mode. Mm. And it's like airplane mode, you yeah. know? It's like Shabbat mode, boop, and yeah. then you're just chilling. I really like that. Solen står lågt utanför fönstret och Shabbaten närmar sig. Vi ska fira den här hos Nathan som är Beckys pojkvän, eller till och med festman. De har nämligen precis förlovat sig, men bor fortfarande i separata lägenheter. Really? Yeah. I, had, I, I, didn't, I didn't like it in the beginning. I first tasted it. I hate salt, but... But other people like it. People like it. A good salad that I make, so. But it's a weird taste. But it's. I feel like. It's... Nathan lagar mat, och jag frågar om jag får hjälpa till. För att vara snäll. Jag suger egentligen på att laga mat. Han ber mig att hacka celery. Det känns lagom. Nathan är lång och har ett hipster skägg. Och har idag är som att det är Shabbat också på sin kippa som är en liten rund huvudbonad. Han jobbar som musiker och är precis som Becky engagerad i det judiska communityt. Det kommer fler gäster och det börjar dra ihop sig för ett avsked till min älskade telefon. Shabbatten börjar med att man tänder ljus och det ska göras minst 18 minuter innan solen går ner. 
det är hög tid för det nu och alla lägger helt oberörda ner sina telefoner i en flätad korg som hänger på en krok i hallen. Det är verkligen bara jag som tycker det här är lite jobbigt. Here we go. But it's ready. Airplane mode. Hey. Uh, I think you should just dump it. If you can't find it, just dump it in there. Yeah, okay. All right. All done, girl. Woo! I didn't post anything. I feel like you did. Don't be. Wait. Can we celebrate the fact that your phone's in a bucket right now? It's a That's basket. good. You're That's a first step. Back. Next time, I'm going to post something. Resten av kvällen blir verkligen överförväntan. Trevlig. Till och med askul. Det var världens jävla fest alltså. Jättegod mat, gott vin och inte alls formellt eller stel som jag trodde det skulle vara. Efter festen så åkte jag hem. Utan min telefon. Det var faktiskt lite jobbigt att gå och lägga sig måste jag säga. Med total tystnad istället för en podd som alltid pratar mig tillsammans. Ja, jag fick panik så jag gick och letade efter böcker och hittade en Harry Potter-bok som jag läste tills jag somnade. På morgonen är ju såklart telefonen det första jag sträcker mig efter. Och nu när den inte finns där så... Ja, jag går ju bara upp istället. Vet inte ens vad klockan är. Det blir faktiskt en väldigt lång dag eftersom att jag inte kunde döda tiden med att scrolla runt på olika appar. Istället har jag varit ute och sprungit. Ja, faktiskt. Legat på stranden, spelat lite på pianot, tänkt och läst. Det har faktiskt varit mysigt. Sen åkte jag till Bäck igen för att få tillbaka telefonen. Men då kändes det typ lite vemodigt. Hey, jag ville nästan inte ha tillbaka den efter all ångest som kom på köpet. En annan grej som var sjuk och typ lite deprimerande var att jag typ inte missat någonting. Jag hade några notiser, något sms, men det var det liksom. Hej. Hej, hur är du? Han är pratar med heter Cashy och är min kompis och typ ja, andliga guide här. Hej, hur är du? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Finally got my phone back. After 24 hours. Yeah, we do this Shabbat. I think it's more than 24 hours. I think 26. Yeah. yeah. Counted like the last two hours I was like, okay, I'm counting down. No. No, but it's, it's It's been so weird to not have your phone. I was like, when I woke up this morning, I was like, what am I even doing? Like, I didn't know what time it was. I had no idea. Then I went to the beach without like a watch or anything. So I was like, I have no idea. If I get lost here, I need to ask people. I'm not prepared for that. <laughs> I don't want to interact with strangers. <laughs> no, but- wow. Yeah, that's a real test, yeah. Do you think you would make it? Um, of I course, it would make it, but yeah, I've, I've tried. Um, you know, I've gone like a, like a week without my phone before. A week? You know, yeah. But yeah, okay. But I had it like I didn't. I had to shut off like everything too. Like couldn't watch TV. Mm-hmm. They t- yeah, no, no. I mean, no, done no, that, no. the hardcore. Yeah. When I went to bed last night, that was the hardest part. You know, I had to read a book. Like, it was yeah. the first time in like 10 years, maybe. But I'll I'll talk to you soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Cool, talk soon. Right. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye. Du har just hört Preach med Linda Ulfjell av Nanna Olasdotter Hallberg, Daniel Persson Mora, Ludvig Widman, Tove Jonstoy, Karin Winter och Martina Magorin Borg. Det här var ett program från UR. Du hittar fler på URPlay.